All right, let's go ahead and play with scene graph. And first and foremost, I need to put out there that yes, this is experimental and no, you cannot publish if this is actually turned on inside of your project. So sit and play. And the last little bit is there's no way I'm gonna be able to answer all of your questions. I'm brand new to this, just like y'all. All right, so first and foremost, we actually have to get it up and running. So we're gonna come up here into project. We're gonna come down to our project settings. And inside of here, you'll find a little checkbox at the very bottom that says scene graph system. So we're gonna go ahead and toggle that on. Now that this has been turned on, we can go ahead and use the system. Now there's a couple of ways to actually create a scene graph. I'm gonna go ahead and use something similar to the way that we build blueprints inside of UE. So bear with me here. I've already got a prefabs folder inside of here. So now I can right click and you should see entity prefab definition. We're gonna go ahead and just do this. Now we're gonna make a jack land in here. So I'll call this P and then we'll call this uh, Jack, like so. All right, go ahead and double click and open up the editor for our prefab, like so. Now. Real quick, this is a static mesh. So static mesh, it's got a couple of different materials on it. Um, I want to light this sucker up, but I do want this to have different colored lights. Now I could create this in an old fashioned way, but we're not gonna do that, so goodbye. We're gonna go ahead and use this new fangled way. Let's go ahead and save this as is. All right, up here in the top right-hand corner is your outliner. Um, now this is kind of the root, and we can very easily select this and then come down into our details and add components to it. And let's go ahead and just do that, but I wanna show you something that's kind of interesting about this. So what I've added is a mesh component. Now it's gone because I already got it added in here, but hey, here's a good opportunity to click here and say remove component, just in case you wanna get rid of it, like so. Okay, so let's go component. We'll go ahead and say mesh component, like so. All right, so inside of our mesh component, I'm gonna go ahead and add Jack, and like so. Cool. Now, from here, I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that I save. Let's go back into the world, and go ahead and drag Jack in, like so. Now, here we have our little prefab, which is awesome. We can see that we have our static mesh and we have our translations over here. Now, there's a reason that I have my details panel over here because I'm gonna show you some very interesting things that are happening. If I come over here and change my translation and reset it, so I'm just going to click here and say clear override, you'll notice it goes to the world origin. Okay, so if I move Jack, it's actually moving the entity around, not the uh, other pieces that I'm about to build, right? So let's go back into here. I'm gonna go ahead and select this component, and I'm gonna go and get rid of it to remove. Instead, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add another entity to this. It's gonna give us a little bit more flexibility. So right click up here at the top and say add entity like so. And let's go ahead and just rename this one. Oh, it's gonna give me a hard time, I'll hit F2. We'll call this one Jack. Okay, now this one, I wanna go ahead and add a mesh component too, like so. Let's go ahead and just add in Jack. Oh, or not, come on. Now, something to note is that uh, you can get static meshes in here, but you can't get the Fortnite pieces in here yet. I don't know why yet. You know, Like I said, I don't have all the answers yet. Okay, so let's go ahead and save that, come back. Now you'll notice it doesn't look any different, right? So if we select this though, you'll notice that we have our root and then we have the other entity that is in there below it. You can see it's actually named entity, huzzah. Uh, pro tip, you can actually just click on this prefab to open up the prefab editor. All right, so. Now here's the difference that I wanted to point out. If we select the root and I move it around, you'll notice that these numbers are gonna change. So keep an eye on those as I'm actually wiggling this like so, right? Now if I select Jack, I can come in here and I can actually move this around. You'll notice that those numbers are also changing over there. But if I grab this root, check it out, that root is like offset. So this is really helpful to understand because as we actually start to build more and more complex pieces, we can actually kind of segment them out, which gives us a lot of control. This is why I love this system and I've been waiting for it. All right, so next up, let's go ahead and just reset Jack's position, right? Now, if we click on it now, what should happen is it should go back to the root, which is sitting somewhere right about here-ish, right? So boom and clear. Da -da. So this is a big distinction to make between where the root sits in the world and resetting its uh, transforms and the other entities that are inside of it and resetting theirs. So that's important to understand. All right, let's take this another step. I'm gonna go ahead and just drop this off to the side here. And within our translations for Jack component, if it's gonna let me do this, like so. Um, we can go ahead and, so I have Jack here selected. I'm gonna start playing with the translation. We can actually change it here inside of the prefab, right? So now what we can do is if we save this, we will see that this will then update. It does not update in real time like we would expect uh, because we're used to playing with blueprints inside of the Unreal Engine. It's a little bit different, but that's worth knowing. Okay, now we have this little icon right here. This means that something has been overwritten. And this one right here is saying that something under here has been under overwritten. So we can go ahead and just clear that overrides and we'll go ahead and reset all of those pieces. So 
that's good to know. All right, let's go ahead and add a light to this as well. So let's go ahead and dock this up here at the top. Now, here's a cool piece because I could add in another entity here and make it the light. That is totally valuable or viable. Uh, but the other thing that we can do too is we can actually select this entity. And in here, if we look up light, uh, we have actually got like a point light. So we can go ahead and add a point light in there like so, right? Now this whole thing is going to move because the mesh component and the point light component are now inside of this entity, which is inside of this prefab. Okay, let's kind of keep that hierarchy kind of together. All right, so let's go ahead and put Jack back where he belongs. And let's go ahead and grab our point light. So with the point light, right, so our point light constraints, whoops, sorry, point light component down here, right, we can go ahead and mess with this stuff. Now with that selected, you'll notice that I'm moving both of these pieces, right? So now we're kind of losing that modularity kind of setup. So this is where we can come back into our point light and we can go ahead and say, let's go ahead and clear that one out. Let's come up here and add in a new entity. And then we'll go ahead and call this one light, like so. So now the light, we wanna add that component, that point light, that my filter is still remembering this. I do like that, I hope that feature sticks, like so. All right, so now we have a light in here and I have a way of actually moving this light around. Let me get it to go up and down. Now it's not showing up great inside of here, that's fine. Let's go and clear that up. And we'll go in here nice and easy. And I'm just going to lift this up. There we go. That makes it a little easier to see. Now, let's go ahead and set this to a nice orange. I'll say, OK, cool. We'll go ahead and save that. Perfect. So now we have Jack in here with the actual orange light inside of it. So let's go ahead and start duplicating this. And I'll show you why this is really cool. So with this prefab selected, right? We have Jack and we have a light inside of here. I'm going to go ahead and move this over and I'm going to move it over again. So now we have three of them all day. Let's go ahead and grab the light for the first one. Uh, actually, let's do the second one. We'll leave the we'll leave that left one over there as a control. We'll grab the light here and now I can come in here and I can actually change the intensity of this one. Oh, you're right. You're going to fight me today. That's cool. Let's go ahead and change it to blue. All right. We should be able to see that. All right, cool. Okay. So the intensity is not going to change. That's fine. Oh, I did a little bit. Oh yeah, it did. Okay, cool. I just couldn't see it. Maybe you can't see it in the recording, but hey, there's that. That's cool. So this and this and this are all the same prefab, but we can manipulate them separately on each one of them, right? And here's another really cool trick. If we go into here, maybe we just don't want the light at all. I can either A, change the values over here, or I can come over here, select this specific entity within this prefab and just delete it. And now it's gone. And it doesn't affect anything that's going on here. And it doesn't affect the original master asset down here at the bottom. And if I ever want another one that's vanilla that has no changes, hey, I can go ahead and just drag those ones in. So hopefully this is a nice quick little update on uh, this new feature that lives here inside of UEFN. It should get you up and running. Um, go ahead and leave some comments down below. It'd be really cool to kind of think kind of see what you all think about this one. Um, I'm really excited to see where this goes. No, I have not played with the verse stuff yet. I know there are some other people out there that are playing with it. Um, I just want to, as an environment artist, kind of play with this to show you what is actually possible without having to try and mess with all the other pieces that go inside of it. Oh, actually one last little thing. Um, this is the, one of the really cool things that I like about this as well. Let's go back into this like so. Uh, I changed the location of Jack earlier, but let's go into that light component if I can get enough of this stuff on screen, light component. All right, cool. And if I change its actual intensity in here, so let's say this is at 5,000. Remember, this one's at 10,000 and I've overwritten it. So this one shouldn't change and this one shouldn't change. But these two, because they're vanilla, should change. All right, so if I set this to something like, I don't know, 20,000, right? It's not going to change yet, but if I hit the save button, all right, now both of these actually light up a little bit bigger. So here's the other big part of this um, that I really, really enjoy is that I can add a whole bunch of these jack-o'-lanterns inside of my world. And if at some point my director, usually myself, comes by and is like, hey, we need those to be brighter, we need to be darker, we need them to be a different color, we can actually do that on the fly and you'll notice that they will all change without any kind of problems. Okay, this, <laughs> here's something to note. This one actually, whoops, this one did not actually change these guys because they were duplicated after that. Ooh, interesting. I wonder why that is. All right, well, I'll dig into that and figure out what's actually going on. But you notice that these ones definitely were not a problem. And I believe the reason for that is because I was dragging these in from there. These were actually duplicated and they are now children that have different properties than the uh, original ones that came out straight out of the content drawer. So yeah, good stuff. All right, yeah, leave some comments, questions. Let's figure out how to use this thing because it's going to be super powerful.